Okay, so for this past semester, I have been doing um, Congolese refugee tutoring at Corinth Presbyterian Church. So they're from Congolese, Africa, and they just came about like a few months to like a year ago. So they're relatively new and they're like put in the school. And so a lot of them like aren't up to date with their peers. So that's why we're tutoring them in like basic um, math, English, and history, just to get them like a little more help. Um, so the words I wrote are mentorship, diversity, action, developmental learning, mission, support, selflessness, inspiration, passion, and most of all, community. I emphasize that one because Dayan emphasizes that as well. And then I kind of just drew lines because they honestly all like interconnect with each other for the most part. Um, so then, um, I forget what it was. It was like at the last step, um, you write kind of like a word phrase that they come yeah. Across. Yeah. Okay. So I wrote a few um, since I this is all I've done at UD since I just came here. <laughs> um, so diverse, hands-on, developmental learning experience. Um, for me, it's been pretty eye-opening so far just because they're from a whole different background than I am. Um, and so culturally challenging, um, I wouldn't say it's like super challenging, but it's just different. Like I'm out of my comfort zone, like not completely, but I mean anyone would be just because they're new people. And like right now I'm tutoring like um, a woman who's 22 years old and she has two kids. And so most of the other kids, like they range from like ages three to like, I think she's the oldest. Um, so it's just really like, it's made me look at life in a different perspective, like tutoring someone who's older than me, but teaching her like how to add like two plus two. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. And why'd you pick developmental learning? What does that mean? Um, I thought mostly for me, like developing like my skills, like communication skills, leadership skills, um, just kind of learning and growing as a person, like through their experiences hearing them, because like we got to know each other like the first few times and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's really like making me learn and developing me into hopefully like a better person than when I came in. Yeah. How'd you get involved or is this like something you want to do for your career or you just got involved because you're interested? Um, so I'm my friend Bo, which you guys probably met him recently. Yeah. Um, he did this last semester, so I think he his friend had a teacher who said like, um, this like just gave them the opportunity and said oh because they just like made this a thing so Robin like the moderator she works at the church in the school I think so she just like started to get people together and now it's like becoming a big thing and more UD students are going there since it's so close um, so he kind of got me into it but I've always loved volunteering like for high school I had to do like service hours and I know like this isn't a requirement but like it's finally something like I'm on my own and like I want to do it so it's kind of just like personal desire, and I want to get in, involved like off campus um, at Dayton too. So, yeah. yeah, awesome. Thank you. I feel like even though you're new to UD, you've already got yourself involved in things that are really impactful and something that you seem passionate about. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Well, last semester, so I swam at Rutgers, mm -hmm. and so I didn't have any opportunity to do anything. Like we couldn't rush. Um, we couldn't. I mean, we could get involved in other things, but we really didn't have time. Yeah. Like, we were practicing, like, 25 hours a week. So it was really hard. Um, so, like, I was in some clubs, but that was about it. So I really, like, wanted to um, continue my volunteering from, like, high school and do it with other things. So, like, Dane was, like, the perfect opportunity. And now that I'm, like, before I, like, chose to come here, I was, like, I want somewhere where I can, like, get involved. And so, like, I'm, like, ready to, like, do things and, like, now that I'm here, I just want to keep doing them, you know? Yeah, Dayton's yeah. definitely a great place for that. There's always opportunities everywhere to get involved, so good choice. Yeah. You like Dayton. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, for my um, poster, I did um, my experience in Salamanca, Spain, where I studied abroad with my high school. And basically through there, we um, took classes in um, the University of Salamanca. I didn't know that. Yeah. And um, while we were there, we, had, we were given various tasks, like go around the city, and like try to collect information for people so that's why I put application of knowledge on there because I really had to use the skills I was learning in class outside the classroom and developmental learning too because I still have to learn Spanish and use it and that was a really big experience for me while I went over there and see the cultural difference and everything. Uh, what, what, what kind of hit you the hardest when you first got there as far as cultural difference? 
the culture um between like the hours between like one and five they have like a la siesta mm -hmm. which is just yep. a nap period so yeah. it was just weird because you know you're just closing yeah and yeah. you know you're a tourist if you go out there in that time and i was yeah. like the only one out there was like where is everybody <laughs> Um, didn't you also work at the dining services before? Yeah, I did too. Did you choose not to add that for a reason, or did you... I don't really see that as a experiential learning thing for me because it's not in my like future goals that I want. Like Spanish is something I want to use in my future career because I want to be an international accountant. So I feel that'd be useful. Were okay. there any soft skills that maybe you learned that could contribute to your future goals? Just organizational, probably. What about like people skills? People like skills too. Skills or people skills. Like uh, yeah, I guess people skills you can like use. Yeah, I'd say part of the EL lab is exploring that opportunity, even though at first glance you might not think that you would learn a lot from it. It then ends up being something that, you know, you have that under your belt now that you've had a different job, a different experience, and it, whether it be positive or negative, you can always learn something from it. Do you have something? that may have been really positive or really negative that you're kind of just changed the way you either looked at things or went about things or anything like that? Oh, my last job? Yeah. Or, um, I don't know. It made me hard working because yeah. I was constantly working. And, like, like never hour shift. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a brutal <laughs> shift. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm um, just mainly like, hard working because I know what I want and like, I don't want to achieve things and like, have my bosses like, really value me. I think that's experiential learning right there. Yeah. It's so your job, even just taking a second to look a little bit deeper, you can think about how it kind of molded your work ethic a little bit more. So that's really awesome. That's cool. Know more about Dylan by the minute. <laughs> it's good. Thanks, Dylan. It's so my turn. <laughs> um, my things, I'm talking about my study of our experience. And right there, I write out that um, I am from Vietnam. I'm going to New York City and then go here for college. And underneath it, I wrote the um, OK face from mm -hmm. Vietnam to New York, and then the smile face from New York to Dan to Ohio. Um, the means behind that is um, at the beginning when I just came here, I didn't have a lot of experience and I didn't like speak fluent in English, so I did not have a lot of friends, and the big thing is I going to New York high school, but with a big group of Vietnamese people, so I, my main language that I use in school in Vietnamese, I can ask my friends, teach me stuff, even though I learn everything in English, but to talk to my friends in Vietnamese and communicate with other people in Vietnamese, so I did not have any like American friends when I was in high school. So that's why I wrote uh, the OK face. But then that's why I choose Dan, University of Dan, because no Vietnamese here, no one around here. So I have a shame to, to improve myself, to improve English, to have more shame to um, make friends with American, um, the, be the best way to learn English. And here I have experience from um, the college uh, mentors also, the global uh, learning program, which like you partner with like not international students from different country, not from Vietnam, but from different country, but it, they use different language, so we have to use English um, to just more make more friends and my connection. And also, I learned from my classes. It's not just um, the academic stuff. I learned um, like all the like the robust style of the like the kind of thing teaching. And I know I have to do homework like online, it's like it's just really different from Vietnam. So all of them, I think it's all my spiritual, um, spiritual learning. And um, yeah, I just have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, um, in the bottom I wrote, uh, I write the, um, the sentence that I used from when I was in high school, that challenge yourself in also the way to learn. Like, um, I, I'm here, I, I already challenged myself already, and I moved to a different state with no Vietnamese, so it's like not a challenge. Mm -hmm. Thanks, and um, can you tell us why you picked uh, communication and leadership skills and those words? Um, communications, because I'm using English right now instead of Vietnamese, so I think I improved a lot. I talk to people, 
like confidently like right now, even though I'm still nervous sometimes. But <laughs> um, leadership skill. I when I was when I still attending to um, in the college mentor program, I feel like I was still shy and very like not that often to be able to talk to people. But I feel like I have to be a role model for my little buddy. Like, how can you encourage them to talk to people if you're not talking to anyone? So it's kind of like the things that force me have to do it, and I think I overcome it. I talk to people. Yeah, and uh, glasses, fun, and friendship, make lots of friends, have fun, party. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's it, right? Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Yeah. Great. Um, so these are going to serve the um, as the basis for what you're going to do next, um, which is now is like the time to um, craft your own story. Like imagine that um, you're telling the story. You know, four or five minutes. We'll share what you wrote, um, and then you know we'll just have like an informal conversation about um, your essays, and then. After the, your presentations, we'll go one by one downstairs and do the little interview video piece um, in the studio. So. Um, I guess I'll go first. Okay. Um, so basically, it just describes the journey of my experiential learning. Um, it first began in um, my freshman year of high school because I was part of the Center for Spanish Language and Global Citizenship. Um, at John Randolph Tucker High School, which is one of the most diverse high schools in America. Um, and my first experience with learning was in Salamanca, Spain, where I had to study abroad. Um, I thought I was, um, already knew about diversity and intercultural awareness, but I actually didn't, because when I went over there, they had a whole different customs that I wasn't accustomed to, and it just allowed me to view things in a different way. Then my next experience was um, teaching elementary schoolers Spanish in um, my junior year of high school. And this really allowed me to like appreciate my failures, because I failed a lot at this, because elementary schoolers are very hard to teach. So it basically learned, taught me how to be adaptable and everything. And then that brought me to my next experience in college, my freshman year, where I worked at Mary Chris Dining Services, and that was a very tough job and the long hours, and it just taught me to be persevere and persevere and delayed. and communicating with my coworkers and team working skills, and that's how I brought this to this current job I'm at at the Office of Experiential Learning and how I use all those skills from my previous experiences and I've been putting them together. And by watching all the videos of um, experiential learning with other students, it's really um, encouraged me to really branch out in college and like try new things. So I'll be able to grow as more as a person, <coughs> um, personally and professionally. Awesome. Now you mentioned also to me once that you wanna um, be a businessman, right? Yeah. Is that so? Can you tell us about like your big dream and how maybe some of these things are like helping you shape that? Um. So my big dream is to be like a CFO one day. So all these like skills I've been acquiring through my experiential learning have like slowly been building me towards that through communication, personal skills, hard work ethic, um, my hard skills in Spanish. So I feel like I can use all of these going forward to acquire the other experiential learning experiences I need to acquire the skills I'll need for a CFO one day. How do you feel like in your classes, you know, when you're taking your cap, you know, your general classes that are required and things like that, like, do you ever find um, that it's hard to find like the, the relevance, the, the real world relevance of what you're learning in the classroom? Do you wish it were more hands-on or are you able to draw from these outside experiences that you're having to like enhance what you're learning in the classroom and vice versa? I do wish it was more hands-on because during my study abroad, I feel like I learned way more in my Spanish experience 
than I ever did before because I actually have to use it and everything. So if the classroom experience was more hands-on, I would feel like I'm learning more. How long did it take you to learn Spanish? <coughs> Fully? Yeah. Five years. About like constant practicing it? Because mm -hmm. I feel like, like I went to a public school and we had to take a foreign language with it. It's pretty common in most yeah. schools, but I mean, I never learned. Yeah, I, I, I took my, I, I took like algebra one and two in Spanish, world history in Spanish, so yeah, pretty in depth. Right. Yeah. Yep. I just never, I don't know why I didn't quickly, but that's awesome that you were able to actually speak it. I really wish I could. Now, do you speak with the um, el F de España or? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, the different pronunciations. <laughs> Yeah. That, yeah, they have a ton. When we went over to Spain, they have a ton of different pronunciations, and the conjugation is way different, so you have to be able to adapt to that, too. Yeah. Yeah, how did that change your, I guess, language learning experience to like actually going to the place, the origins of the language? It, it was weird because we were learning the different a different style of Spanish. Very different dialect. Right? Yeah, so it was, you had to be able to adjust a lot, oh, and sure. just like conjugating off the spot is very hard. So. Yeah. Do you think that that experience has helped you be more like open to different like people and cultures, or did you already have that kind of uh, appreciation I, of diversity? I already had that appreciation for diversity because my main attraction towards the John Randolph after high school was its diversity. Because the high school I was originally supposed to go to was like ninety percent white, and I didn't really like that, so I applied to that school and got into it, and I was so thrilled. Mm. Wow, that's really cool. How do you feel about Dayton? Dayton, I feel like it'd be more diverse, honestly. Yeah. My parents have the same thoughts of wanting me to go somewhere where I can be surrounded by all different types of people. Yeah, just that's how the world is. Mm -hmm. so. Something that we talk about a lot is like, the, you know, how students talk about the UD bubble and, you know, wanting to connect more with like this, you know, surrounding community. Have you had a chance to do that yet? or encounter maybe diversity in the greater city of Dayton beyond the Dayton campus? I have not, because I've been busy working <laughs> constantly. <laughs> I work too hard. <laughs> no, no, no. My last semester I was pretty busy, but this semester I haven't really had a chance yet, so hopefully I can actually do that. No, Monday. I think Dylan's going to come along on Monday for the um, oh, refugee. Refugee, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to, I told Robin ahead of time that maybe we'd want to come along and talk to you, so that would be really, yeah, something be, both you and I would be totally yeah. new. and really It'd be nice nervous. to see. Yeah. I can go. <laughs> All right, take it away. <coughs> so, um, challenge myself with a way to learn is a sentence that go with me uh, when I just came to United States. So, my name is Thuy Tran, and an, an international student coming from Vietnam, and currently I am a freshman at University of Dayton. This is such a valuable experience for me because I have been in New York City for three years for high school, which I call an okay journey. And um, this is my first year in college in Ohio, and I call it a smile journey. I call my experience in high school an okay journey for reasons. When I was in New York, I was staying in the big group of Vietnamese community, which is very helpful for me at some point because who doesn't want to speak his or her language every day and um, uh, meet the people who come from the same culture every day. But however, I did not recognize that it was a big minus for me for my overseas experience until I started my senior years of high school. Because of staying in the two safe uh, zone with all my Vietnamese friends, this is no change, that was no change for me to be open with other people uh, who do not really know, who I don't really know, and use a different language and have experience different cultures from I have. From that, communications become my weakness. Realizing myself of needing more than just a com comfort zone, I decided to apply and go to University of Dayton for college experience, and I think this was the best decision I have made. Uh, I call my college experience a smile 
uh, journey because at the University of Day End, I have more dream to improve my English, communication skill, leadership skill, and especially have more fun by talking to new people and making more friends through um, some uh, special program like the college mentor program, global partner program, or even in my classes. I rely on myself more confident, more active, and always ready to deal with any problems, and also ready to adapt new things and new living environment, which are, I believe, a very important skill for my business, business future career. Even though I have seen myself get, in, get improved from my new experience, but I would never stop myself right here, never stop shelling myself from new experience. Uh, because I know that it would be something else that I could learn after that, which I could never think of yet. I can't wait to look for my new experience, to learn beside my lectures, to listen in class, and all the words I in, in my notebook. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <clears throat> I had a question just regarding like your high school experience versus college. Not even really, I guess, diversity-wise, just like, because high school can be like a very confining place for mm -hmm. you. You don't necessarily, I guess, experience as much as you can because you know you either, you don't even know it's out there because it's just yeah. You just you go to school, you do you do your homework, you go home. You don't necessarily get that chance like I do, like you do in college to get involved. You don't you don't even want to really get involved in high school. I don't think as much as in college. So how is the like what's what's the difference I guess between high school and college for you in general? As I mentioned at the beginning, I am an international student that I'm not like the mystic students that I go to school and then go back home. Mm -hmm. I stay with the host family. And um, my, my host family daughter is also come from my school. But we, we get along pretty well at home, but we did not really talk at school because she has her own friends, I have my own friends, like my Vietnamese friends. Even though my, my opportunity is right there to talk to her friends, to make um, connection with her friends too, but I did not take that opportunities. I would stay in my to say zone, like just staying, just playing with my Vietnamese people because I know that they will understand what I'm talking about and I, and they probably gonna understand what I believe and they not gonna be like against my thought or have a different thought of mine. So, that, so that's why I feel like here, I have more change to talk to people. I feel like I'm more confident in just talking and I know that people have um, disagreed too, but like I learned that they also give you the feedback. Like they disagree, but they know they, they tell you that why they disagree and why they don't think it's right, and why I know a lot of why. Like when I'm here, but no, not in high school. There's a purpose now, not just this. This is what it is. There's a reason. Yeah. Like it's so interesting because I was also going to ask. You know what what. What is unique, do you think, about Americans now that you're here and you're immersed in, in the, maybe I should say Midwestern, or actually no, because students who come to UD are actually not really mm -hmm. from here, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what, what, what have you observed since coming okay. here about how people interact and mm -hmm. communicate? So um, I was really shy to like interact with people at the beginning, because um, I have some, I know I pretty different. Like the way you eat pizza, for example. <laughs> in Vietnam, or in, in different country, in Asia country, we still have pizza with ketchup. The ketchup on pizza is fine, it's okay. But here, they think it's yeah, weird. Don't. I get super judged when I Yeah, I they, that they the think that it's, the pizza is already have the tomato sauce on it. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're, we don't need ketchup anymore. But. I still can eat pizza with ketchup sometimes. So, um, I mean, that's why like, I don't go to the pizza restaurant with my American friends because, because they're gonna trust me, how, how? This is the way of eating that, you know? But here, also, in, in college, like, I talk to more people and, like, um, I just eat the way I eat. And, I mean, they say that, but I'm like, um, but, I used to it. I mean, I mean, I'm not afraid of that anymore. I don't. I'm. I'm more confident about what I'm doing. So yeah.
And in terms of like, um, did, I don't know if you mentioned it before, but do you have, like, did you come in with a sense of what you want to do when you graduate, or is that something you feel like you're going to figure out a little later on, or have any of these experiences you've had so far start to like help you figure that out? Um, at first, like, I am the person that decides to go study abroad. Like, none of my parents know about my decisions after I t told them that I'm going, like, I want to go. Um, I already think that um, I, w I will stay here for college up to a couple years, like four years. But um, I am still between staying here, working right here, here, or going back to Vietnam, working in Vietnam. I'm still in between. But I know that I'm going to stay here for college, and I know that I'm going to business major, and I know what I like to do. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. I feel like it's really cool that in such a short amount of time, when you really think about it, the amount of confidence you gain. Yeah. It's like I couldn't even imagine doing that, and oh, it's very you. inspiring to literally pick up everything and move somewhere else and just immerse yourself in something new. Because I feel like that is so beneficial mm -hmm. and something that I'd love to do and a lot of people would love to do, but mm -hmm. it's so hard to actually do that. It's and right. you did, and it's really, really amazing. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like your life is experiential learning, I guess. Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> hard. Awesome. Believe me, it's really hard. <laughs> It just like you stay away from home for like the whole year and you go back home for like two months and then you're back here. Yeah, it's like yeah. It's hard. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so I started off talking about how like my experience last semester kind of like molded me kind of into like a different person because so I came from Illinois and then I was in New Jersey like swimming and so I just like kind of became a completely different person because like you guys were talking earlier about like diversity and how Dane's kind of a bubble and, like you don't know whether it's like better to go to a school that's like super diverse or not well I went from like small private school to big 10 school with like 50,000 students so it was just a culture shock and it was hard to find friends and the swimming, like, I just realized it wasn't what I wanted to do. So, like, things just kind of all, like, fell apart, and I, like, knew I wasn't meant to, like, be there. And it sounds corny, but, like, when you know, like, you know. Like, I knew right away. So it was just a matter of, like, getting through the semester and then figuring out where I wanted to, like, transfer to. So I said that that kind of gave me a new perspective on life. Like, because um, I was a completely different person, and now I'm back to, like, who I was before, kind of. Because, like, this is a lot like my high school, like, where you know people. But there, like, with such a big school and so much diversity, I wasn't exposed to that. And so then I wasn't, like, taking, well, also because of swimming, it kind of, like, restricted me. But I wasn't, like, taking new opportunities and stuff because I was so, like, out of my element. So I feel like for some people, it's good to have a lot of diversity. And then some, like, it's not. Like, I feel like I'm growing a lot more here, even though it's kind of, like, where I'm from. It's just, like, your past kind of, like, shapes you into who you are. So I kind of talked about that. And then um, I said, like, when I came here like I knew what I wanted because last semester it was like exactly what I didn't want kind of so like I was equipped I knew um so I said I immediately got involved with the tutoring um and just that they inspire me to like be a harder worker because they're working really hard to learn English like quickly because they have no other option and like their parents like want better lives for them like than they had I guess since they all just kind of came here um so I said, like, their desire to learn and adapt to our culture inspires me to continue my passion um, of giving back to others as well as studying abroad um, in a foreign country. So I'm planning on going to Spain next semester in the fall. Um, so I said that that experience is kind of, like, giving me more, like, courage and confidence to go somewhere else and go out of my element again and kind of do what they're doing and, like, immerse myself into something new. So, yeah. That's basically what I wrote about. That's great. And um, so were you surprised when you found out about like all these refugee families um, when you met them at the church? Like, did you know that there was a refugee population in Dayton or was it kind of like a little bit of culture shock when you realized? Yeah, I had no idea. So all I, I had just heard from Bo that he was tutoring these and I was like, what? Like refugees and they were like, no, like 
um, apparently, like, their grandpa, like, there's just, they're all one big family that came, and it's because their grandpa, like, works for the government or something, so they all got to, like, come here, um, and so I was, like, kind of pretty much, like, you know, I was, like, oh, my gosh, like, that's so cool what you're doing, um, and, like, I, I've never tutored, like, anything really before, um, or especially with any, like, one from Africa or, like, different country, so it was just kind of, like, a new experience, and I was, like, well, I'm already, like, trying something completely new, so, like, why not keep doing this, and, like, because, like, last semester, I was just so lost with, like, what I wanted to do and everything, and so now I'm, like, well, I need to keep figuring out who I want to be, like, which paths to go down, you know. That's so fascinating, and what do you observe of the interaction between the refugees and the UD students? Do you, like, notice anything about their relationship, like, do they trust UD students, or is there kind of like, are they a little bit hesitant to interact at first, or are they just immediately kind of like warm, warmed up to the students? Um, surprisingly, like what I've observed, like they've been really like warm to all the tutors, because there's some from UD and some not, and there's some like older people, like grandparents that are doing it too, so, but they seem very like willing to learn, and like obviously like we display like, like I'm working on my patients just being slow, because it's like, it's just different having to teach someone older than me, like basic math, like the ABCs and stuff. So it's definitely like different, um, but knowing that like they're willing to work um, just like helps, you know. Have you learned anything about their culture, like their, about their language or what language do they speak? Do you know? Um, Congo, Congolese? It's, it's, I forget what it's called, but they'll speak it sometimes to each other, like, when, because, like, we all, we're all at separate tables so that they stay focused, <laughs> but, um, since they're all, like, related, so they would just talk the whole time, but, yeah, I've heard them speak, and then, since my, since the one that I, like, am mostly, like, working with, since she has kids, like, sometimes I'll ask her about them and stuff, and, like, the dad isn't in the picture, so I was, like, like, we just got to know each other, like, baseline but it's only been a few weeks so like I'm planning on learning more about like the culture but she just told me that the food is a lot different and it's a very hard like adaptation um, but she's like really willing to do it because she wants her kids to like have a good life here yeah. Yeah. you definitely find with experiential learning that you can learn a lot from something you didn't like and if your world could be turned upside down and you'll forever know that this place wasn't for me, this type of environment wasn't for me, and you can kind of find, and you know what makes you you or who you are based on that you're more comfortable now at UD because it's something that, I guess, aligns with your values and who you are. Mm -hmm. So although we can all have negative experiences or be worked really hard at Mary Crest, um, sometimes you just know what's right. And I had that at just like a surface level, like I had the longest hair last semester, like the beginning of this, I chopped it all off because one day I just knew. It was just time. <laughs> I was like, I looked in the mirror, I was like, this is, no, it just, it, that doesn't look good. So I literally chopped it off, I've never looked back. And that's so <laughs> surface level. Never back. <laughs> Sometimes, you just know, yeah. you know? What can I tell you? Exactly. <laughs> it could be deep and it could be bad. So, yep. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Your realization. <laughs> you cut your hair too. Like I did, yes. I did. You showed me a video. Oh, really? Yeah. Long hair. Very long hair. Yeah. <laughs> the man bun. I mean, yeah, it <laughs> no, I wish it would look so good. good. Yes. Yeah, it would have yes. looked good. <laughs> so, yeah, so you're going to Spain. Are you yes. excited? Like, yes. awesome. It's That's fun. Awesome. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish? Um, I've done it like all middle school, high school, but haven't done it yet. So we'll yes. see. Practicar con Dylan. Sí. Con yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, since I'm doing communication, <coughs> I have to take a language, so I might take Spanish there too, and I feel like that'll just add to the experience. So, yeah, we'll see. Thank you so much. All right, well, um, you all have some really great insights, and um, you know, you've already had some really awesome experiences at UD, and I'm very um, grateful that you've shared your your stories. Um, so now, uh, if you want, we can head over to the recording studio downstairs. Uh, we'll take a volunteer, and basically, um, I'll just ask you a few informal questions based on your story, um, and you'll basically just share like what you just shared with the group, um, and then we. Will
will probably just take 10 minutes each for that. So uh, I don't know who wants, who feels brave enough. You want to go first? Yeah, because yeah. I have to just have to leave. All right.